Today, to get a good person to marry is like hunting for a needle in a haystack. Perhaps not as difficult as that, but for a lot of people it may be just that. And it is very, very risky because sometimes we've picked up part of the hay and we think it's a needle. And in the same way, we think we have a good man or a good wife and it only turns out later on that they're not as good as we thought they were. So it's important for us, once we've made the decision, each one of us should be, the main aim in our lives should be to please our maker, to please our creator. We need to be constantly conscious of that. If that is the case, we will be able to lead a happy life. If my main aim is to please my creator, my religion teaches me to be the best person, to be the best husband, to be the best wife, to be good in character, good in conduct, to get up early in the morning, to, you know, to read late at night, to make sure that I've prayed, to make sure that I have fulfilled my duties unto him, as well as my duties unto the rest of my family members. All that is part and parcel of my religion and fulfilling what the Almighty has instructed me to fulfill. And for this reason, when you look at someone who has character, conduct, they speak well, they know how to come across, when they want to say something, they choose the best way of coming across, you will lead a much happier life than marrying someone who's very abrupt, no character, no conduct, no religion, and so on. We've had cases where you have people who pick up their wives in nightclubs. It is said that is exactly where they leave them. We ask Allah to protect us. What that means is, they picked someone up in the nightclub because of how good their legs looked, or for example, how nice their face was, or how beautiful the hair was. The day they find someone with better legs, na'udhu billah, or better hair, or better looks, they will drop this one and go for the next. So that was not the proper way of looking for a wife. Whereas, we needed to be introduced to someone with utmost dignity and respect. Why is it that Islam teaches us the introduction? So that we can protect the female from being blackmailed, from the gullibility that she might be falling into, and from being abused and used. You find a person behind the backs of their parents, they develop a link with someone, and they continue, this person is blinded by love. We all know even the English saying, love is blind. The English have said it, love is blind. Islam says the same thing. The hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, love can not only blind you, but it can make you deaf and dumb at the same time, which means you will not understand anything because it's love. So they will come to you with their gifts, with their beautiful words. They only show you what they want to show you. And in the process, what happens? We tend to think this is them. We have not yet lived with them. We don't even know their family. We don't know what their family thinks of them. We don't know what the friends think of them. And this is why the introduction was wrong in the sense that we haven't yet understood the whole person and we're so much in love with them, we cannot wait to get married. So we think, let's get married. We put pressure on our parents and everything, say it were to happen, and we ended up marrying the second day, if not the first, we're already complaining, this is not the same person I married. This is not the same person. Look at him, he's vulgar. No, he is the same person, but he didn't show you what he didn't want you to see prior to getting married because he needed you in his picture. Now that you are in his picture, it's over. You are doomed. May Allah protect us. Nobody is doomed. We always have another chance, but let's not repeat the mistakes and let's not continue in that way. For this reason, we are taught the introduction should happen with respect. And when it happens with respect, the elders need to know about it. Someone, you know, some male needs to know about it and they need to approve of it in the sense that they should guide us along. Before you fall head over heels in love with someone, you need to know their character and conduct and you need to have moved through a category where you could have said no without it hurting you and without you feeling, oh, I've lost so much. This person is my enemy because they are telling me no and that person is my enemy because they are telling me no. We don't want that type of behavior and for that reason we protect the female especially from the beginning. Sometimes I know the world is preaching freedom and so on sometimes the word freedom is used to drop us into the dumps and we don't realize that we don't understand it sometimes the word freedom is used in actual fact to enslave us we don't realize it and sometimes it is used correctly where we are to be honest with you to be practicing our freedoms so we need to know what decision we make for the type of person we marry once you marry the right person ask yourself in fact prior to marriage is this person fit to be the mother of my children. 
is this person fit to be a father to the children I expect to have? Will they be a role model? If that is the case, the way they will speak to me will be with respect. They will consider me, they will dignify. Whatever I have to say will be held in high esteem. If they need to correct me, they will do it in all love. They will do it with such goodness and kindness. When they walk with me, they will not disgrace me in public. They will be people who will try to look at things how I look at things. And at the same time, as I said, when they need to correct me, they will correct me in a way that will be palatable and acceptable. It will be digested quite easily.